It's a breakfast in Positive Africa time for Off the Press. As always, we have Ezekiel Nyai Tok, who joins the conversation. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Ezekiel Nyai Tok. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. It's a privilege to be on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for having me. Many thanks as well. Uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. And uh, the, the banner caption for what the leadership says, 2023 PDP governors, Sean Atiku's declaration meets in Abia. Very interesting. Uh, as we inch closer to 2023, a lot's going to unfold. National chairmanship, APC governors concede to President Mohamed Buhari, that's PMB on consensus candidate. Say, we will support President's anointed aspirant in a democratic dispensation. And we constantly talk about democracy in our political parties, uh, because if you can't have that, you know, at that point, the foundation, and would you rather not expect, you know, uh, uh, the larger scale or the bigger scale? Uh, you also have pressure mounts on other aspirants to step down ahead of the convention. Boni meets Senator today, so all of the politicking and uh, all of the interest and lobbying would actually start. Electoral Act now set for showdown with executive over Abia Court's verdict. Federal Executive Council approves 92.1 billion naira for second Abuja Airport runway. Uh, that's also what you find. And just before we move away, you also have 5,000 residents around Lekki Deep Seaports may relocate. Interesting. Outcry in a door as a basket sacked 514 workers. And uh, you also have NATO chief warns Moscow ahead of emergency meeting talking about the Ukraine issue, uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia concerned. Uh, these are some of the headlines we'll take this morning on the leadership. Away from the leadership, we'll move on next to the nation newspaper. The lead story this morning, Buhari governors agree on Adamu as consensus chair. With some riders there, Senator Namani South, Senator Kerry North endorsed as deputy chairman on unity list. Uh, no election at convention or that chair aspirants to get refund of nomination fee. That's uh, the main story on the nation above the masthead. Uguani Oladipo, 35 others in PDP zoning panel. Beside that story, Wider circulation, okay, showing how the cries protest over OAU VC agitations crazy. Once again, showing how the cries protest over OAU VC. Millions gone as fire raises Lagos at Benway markets. Give us another chance. Be the big governors, beg Nigerians. Other stories on the nation this morning. IMF ready to lend more to Nigeria. Sonwolu launches Lagos ride with 1,000 cars. And on the red strip here, let's see if we can take that one. Are your government set to hand over GCI to Old Boys Association? Those are the stories you can find on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Away from the Nation, uh, we take a look at the punch and on the punch he talks about the electoral act national assembly plans appeal tackles george malame insists on amendment and this is what you find uh underneath bajabi amila acts attorney general not to temper with electoral act court ruled that the provision be deleted not part of our law malame is quoted apc moves to bar appointees from voting at convention and primaries this arises is underneath the board caption uh, still looking at the front page of the punch, quite interesting headlines. Report where your husband resides and NYC tells married prospective corpus. And uh, Buhari other silver carry CDS to hold crude oil theft. And Sardin Kaduna balls, death toll hits 37,000, church attacked. Settlements raise very, very sad. PDP governors list uh, Buhari regimes economic woes and boast better leadership. And just as at the time where you know there's a lot going on, especially in security, uh, economic hardship, and what have you, you 
I mean, politics is still ongoing. So you have people, I mean, governors, senators, everyone lobbying and the politicking is ongoing who becomes the next governor who becomes these and the issue of governance especially for those who are contesting i mm. mean for those who are uh, incumbent for instance governors and senators and what have you has actually been relegated uh, you know to the back and so politics has taken the front said really sure. sad 1000 taxes will provide employment says shon wolu uh, that's talking about the governor of Lagos State and the lag ride that was launched. Uh, you also find that autonomy, this regard, fire me, Akiri Dolu's opposition, NULGE tells Buhari, Lagos shorts damage a coal bridge as fire destroys market. Traders actually lament. These are some of the uh, headlines we take this morning on the Punch newspaper. And then we'll move on next to the Tribune. All right, Electoral Act, National Assembly to appeal judgment on Section 84, subsection 12. Uh, with the writers there, we are working to implement court order that according to the AGF, but Jabia Mila wants Malami against hasty enforcement of ruling. Lagos right, Songolu rolls out 1,000 cars for taxi scheme. Henderson uh, blames fuel scarcity on lack of forex. Traditional worshippers dissociate selves from invasion of OAU campus. Lagos free trade zone investments to heat $461 billion in 45 years. That's according to NEBSA. APC governors endorse Buhari's choice for party chairman as zones work toward consensus candidate Adamu Musa. Al Makura Akume, Mustafa Mishore face screening committee. Senate caucus meet CECPC today. Now, FEC OK's 92.123 billion naira contract for Abuja Airport second runway. Above the masthead, Nigeria a sinking ship needing urgent rescue Atiku says 2023 a choice between unity and division fire raises bridge shops at Apogmo in Lagos those are the stories you can find on the Tribune the front page that is all right let's have Ezekiel Nyai to share his thoughts this morning on the papers Ezekiel once again thank you so much for joining us well, it's great for to be here all right let's take a look at the uh, the Punch newspaper. He talks about the National Assembly and the plans to appeal Section 84, Subsection 12, and the fact that uh, Malami insists on amendment uh, according the Electoral Act. What are your thoughts? The very first thing is that we must realize that this nation belongs to all of us, and that the people that have been elected into government and those who are appointed by those whom we elected are all put there to serve us they are paid by our money and as a result they owe it to us as nigerians for them to do what will be in the best interest of the generality of the people to that end I think it is despicable, I think it is shameful, I think it is unethical for the Attorney General of the Federation to handle a matter as sensitive and as important as an electoral act in a way that he goes to one place, brings up a case without getting the principal partners to that case to be heard and a man who is a judge sits on that case in almost record time gives judgment to that case without any difference to the principal partners to that case in the electoral act you cannot but see the national assembly as a principal partner you cannot but see INEC as a principal partner. You cannot but listen and hear from them before you make a judgment. And 
anybody but the attorney general should be one person who says for such a sensitive matter let hear from all the sides before a judgment is given no the judge goes ahead to give a judgment on such a sensitive matter and then the attorney general who should be the custodian of do rightness in legal jurisprudence is the same person who is rushing with lightning speed to want to activate the necessary legal proceedings to ensure that it is expunged as directed by the law. And yet, so many other judgments that have been given, validly given, seen by the public as being valid, no response is made to them by way of implementation. Now, the, the, the National Assembly, I must commend them, particularly the House of Reps, have said, number one, we are going to appeal. I think that's both arms of the, of the National Assembly. Number two, from the House of Reps, we are going to write the National Judicial Council because this is unethical, this is an abuse of office, this is something that is unacceptable. And I want to say, if you follow the readings on the social media, which is the, the, the marketplace uh, or, or, or the village square of Nigerians, you can see that Nigerians are incensed and they are 99.9% .9 behind the National Assembly. Malami should please know that we are paying him to serve us and not to serve his personal interest. If he wants to contest, no problem. You are at liberty to contest, but please, step down and contest no problem that's what the law says for now and if you don't want to step down then follow the proceedings and I, finally i want to tell apc that, that they should be very careful because if they want to take the law for granted zamfara experience might come back to bite them all right uh, let's still talk about the apc uh, they are still in the news uh, uh, which uh, different captions from different uh, newspapers, uh, leadership caption, yes, this way, national chairmanship, APC governors concede to PMB on consensus candidate, while well, the nation captioned it this way, Buhari governors agree on Adamu as consensus chair. Their national convention is just uh, days away, or about a day or two away. So what do you see playing out really on the 26th of uh, March? I will, I will tell you this for free. APC has found, has found itself between the rock and the hard place. And they've got to bring strategists to help them navigate the mines. Where are the mines? Number one, there are people that are not in APC anymore, but they are still in APC. I'm sure you understand what I mean. Also, They are there to scatter that whole thing because they've left APC already. Okay? I'll give you a very little example. Please do. If a man like Kwan Kwaso was not um, like um, trying to be a gentleman, he probably would have stayed in PDP until the dying minute when he knows that it was his heart was out of the PDP. And then all the damages are done and he will leave. There are people in APC that are no longer members of the APC, but they are going to get their pound of flesh. They are determined to get their pound of flesh. So they are waiting and APC needs to find a way of praying to identify such people and know how to handle them and not to take them for granted. Number two, I believe that APC advisors have been able to read the current electoral act which is so important on the concept of consensus. Well, you may say this one, it is about the party and not about election. I don't know how those things tie up, but within the concept of consensus in the current dispensation, there must be an agreement of all parties concerned, possibly in writing. All parties, if one person says, no, I don't agree. You've got to go to back to the back to field. But before, they could ignore the person and just move on. These days, one insignificant person can go to court, and the court will be very clear on the matter. So I think that APC needs to be very 
careful on what they are looking at as being their consensus person to ensure that whoever emerges as a chairman will be a man that is eligible to sign the forms of their candidates to INEC that is recognized by INEC. So the processes and the procedures must be such that the none is imputable. That's very, very, very important. And finally, I've said it before, and I say it again, the extent to which everything hinges on one man just shows a very weak party that has no systems, no structures, and such a system wanting to come back is taking Nigerians for granted. This convention should have been one area where they tell Nigerians we've rebranded, we've changed, we are coming with a new approach, we are doing things properly, trust us. But if at this dying minute, APC is still APC, they are wanting to come back. I think there's something they know that I don't know. But trust me, that thing must be in their minds. But let's still stay with, you know, the APC and the fact uh, that's on the leadership, by the way. Uh, you have the leadership saying the national chairmanship, APC governors concede to President Muhammad Buhari on consensus candidate. And it's part of the uh, thoughts that you have held just before now. But Ezekiel Nyaito, we know that internal democracy is a principle that's so important, you know, to a democratic regime. It's not just in Nigeria, but it's a global phenomenon. And the fact that if, you know, the lack of internal democracy would always cause in inter-party conflict, and that at the end of the day would trickle down to, you know, democracy as it is. So um, don't you think that, you know, at this point in time, uh, where we're thinking about, I mean, having the electoral laws, because we begin to question some people, like you have always said, you have become a, a big fan of the president uh, for just simply, you know, giving uh, a yes, you know, passing and assenting to this electoral uh, act as it is. But uh, we still find all of this element, which are still very, f uh, you know, fundamental to our democracy. You see, those elements will have to be there until the mainstream media wakes up to the reality that Nigeria does not have two parties. Those two parties are going to keep making the mistakes. They are going to keep shooting themselves in the foot and they are going to get themselves out of reckoning. Now, what, what bothers me about mainstream media with all due respect is that we, why do we think that we have two parties in Nigeria? It's a myth. It's not a reality. You see, one day I'll have an opportunity to do a synthesis to Nigerians on what we have been calling election and, and this, this bogus thing that we call two parties. Two things I would like to tell you for free. One, APC members plus PDP members all put together, they form less than 40% of the voting population. We've got to know that. Forget those figures they give you. Go to Anambra State. A man that had over three to 400,000 at primaries could not get 50,000 at the election. This election is his members and non-members of his party combined. He could not get 50,000 or thereabout. But in his party primaries alone, he had over 400,000. This is bogus figures that are unfounded. That is why I like the current electoral act. Secondly, the way they conduct elections in the past is you just take a few forms and go there to the polling unit. As soon as they leave there, just divert between the polling unit and the collation center, divert, park the car, settle the police, settle the parties, settle INEC, settle the, the everybody, and then fill your forms. We've never been having elections in Nigeria. This is going to be the first time where the figures at the polling unit are the figures that get transmitted to Abuja, are the figures that everybody, I'm contesting the governorship. I am telling you that at the close of elections in, uh, in 2023, I already know myself. 
from the current electoral act. Nigerians need to be enlightened to know that. But, but, Number two. But Ezekiel and I, talk, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. But one will begin to query an electoral act that does not promote internal democracy, an electoral act that does not address the issue of uh, you know, fundamental uh, democracy and allowing the people to express and allow people you know, to express themselves uh, at the party level, which is very, very critical. We can't no, take that. No, you are wrong. You are wrong. The electoral act has made it very clear that you have three ways that you have your candidate emerge. You have direct primaries where every member of the party votes like we are going to do in ADC. It's a choice. These are the sort of things that the main. So, so why do we give the choice? Because as long as you leave that option, we understand no, the no, back no, and forth that has you been. But Ezekiel Yaito, you understand. I mean, we were here. We were here when yes. we had the back and forth with the particular yes. clause until that clause yes. was included. And we know that the yes. consensus clause that has been included in that bill just allows yes. power to, you know, a select few leaders. And that was, that's no, what's going to no, constantly no, happen. No, no, no. Let me tell you, let me tell you. I've been the national chairman of a party, and I'll tell you this. Globally, globally, you can have direct primaries, you can have indirect, and you can have consensus. Now, what the current electoral act did was to make sure that what they did before on consensus is stopped. You just get inside and then they will legislate. Everybody step down. We are bringing that man, which is autocracy, which is imposition. They said, no, if you have sold forms to four people, all the four people have to agree that we accept this man. All the other three must agree. If any of the three does not agree, you've got to go to the field. So, so in the case so, of the APC, you think that there's some of, some sort of agreement? That that is they are they are still living in the past. They are living in the past. They've not come to terms with the current realities. That's why they didn't want this this electoral act to see the light of day. When we sit down and do a synthesis of the current electoral act you see that we've taken a bold step forward. It might not be everything, but we've taken a bold step forward. We could not all do direct primaries because there is no party platform. That will be addressed after this election. I've written a letter to national chairman of INEC. There is a way to organize the party register of every party and put the membership in three categories, active financial, non-active financial others active financial means you have your pvc and you've paid your membership dues non-active financial is that you have your pvc but you're not paying your financial your dues then the third one others is anybody including children where you want to you know groom them on the ideology philosophy of the party now those that are active financial they have their pvc and they have paid their membership dues, will all be voting members delegate in every election. By so doing, you get people to pay party dues and you get every member of the party to be part of the leadership recruitment. That is the way forward. That is too soon for now. You can't have that register now. So let us manage this first process and get to the second phase. For now, I think Nigerians need to know that if APC and PDP are not willing to do the right thing, there is an alternate. And the mainstream media should also bring up this alternate because there's too much silence about the third force, which is ADC. Don't dismiss them. Don't dismiss them. Bring them in the mix so that Nigerians have a choice. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Nyaituk, let's uh, move on to other things uh, for sake of time. Uh, so all these in the news, uh, practically all the papers are picked up on his um, Lagos right. Uh, he has launched uh, some sort of um, taxi uh, you know, scheme and uh, with a uh, thousand uh, taxis uh, yesterday. You know, I just want to get your opinion concerning that. It's in the punch. Uh, it's on the punch. It's on the nation newspaper as well. You know, so the thing is that uh, Lagos State government is actually taking it into or uh, investing into transportation yet again you see that as a as a good step uh, a step in the right direction I, I, or they I, want to compete I, to the private sector what are your thoughts really you see government i am one person who believes that 
government has every business being in business because oh, really? government must be the most organized sector, the most focused sector, because government has our lives in their hands. And Nyaito cannot afford to live his life on the hands of somebody who is irresponsible. We must come back to seeing government and putting it on them to be the most responsible, the most organized, the most focused. If you look at chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b, it says the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Now leave the second part, take the first part, the security and welfare of your, yourself, everybody, is the most important thing. And that is put as the primary purpose of government. Come back to um, my brother, Obon Samolo. You know, when he removed my friend and schoolmate, Ambode, from office, I was very, very unhappy. You know, Ambode and I were schoolmates, Federal Government College, worry, and understandably, you know, secondary school is where you have, like, your best friends and all that. But I must say that just like... Uh, Buhari has signed the Electoral Act and have forgiven all his sons, his sins. And since Sonwolu has come in, he's acted very well, and I'm, I'm very happy with him. Very, very, very happy with him. Coming to transportation, let him look at Ibom Air, for instance, in Akwaibo. Everybody, including myself, I was the first person that said that was absolute rubbish, nonsense, waste of our resources. I don't agree. When they started operating, I came back on there and said, I take back my words, I apologize, I'm very happy. Today, Ibom Air is the best run airline in Nigeria, without a doubt. Any businessman who wants to go on time takes Ibom Air. To that extent, if Lagos State can also play that same role of bringing, if Uber can be that, you know, boat can be that effective and efficient, Lagos State can as well come in and play in that market and get a good chunk of the market share and give Lagosians, they can even, as government, be able to play down on the profit margin such that the drivers, the commission that goes to these bold people can now go back to the community, to the drivers and there could be a relative regulation on the fares. So government has every business in kind of networking with the organized private sector to get this thing done. I don't know the modalities, but I want to say if the modalities is right, the Lagos state government would have started something that other state governments will emulate. And by the grace of God, if I become the governor, I will also emulate because there's nothing new. Ezekiel Yaitu, let's get a little bit into this one. I mean, you still have some people who say government has no business in being in government. I mean, in being in business. Uh, government That's should rather... Elect no, no, but... Ezekiel <laughs> Yaitu, let, let, let's look at it this... So we are governors. <laughs> so if gov I mean, because a, a lot of people would still say, and it's an argument that's been very valid, because if you begin to look at some of the ent enterprises and uh, businesses that government has been involved in, I mean, it's really in a sorry state. So um, that argument would still remain that government has no business in being in government or in business. Mm -hmm. Rather, government should be in the business of ensuring that there's an enabling environment, provide security where you have the private sector thrive. And we have seen that, you know, in, as an international uh, phenomenon and practice across board. But let's even calm down. I mean, it's a good thing that the Lagos state government is delving into transportation, thinking about it. But recent incident that has happened where we still hear the government saying, oh, we're involved and we're here in the back and forth with the BRT. The BRT would be the most safest. One would think it's the most safest. But the sad incident that happened in Lagos um, is one that has actually discouraged a lot of persons, even though you still have some people patronizing. And so with that, you know, thinking about that and looking at that situation and having this, what, what's, what, what's the security? Because one would not think that elements would take over, you know, a system, a transport system at that and begin to perpetrate evil. So um, how then is government good at being uh, you know, in business or should government still really be in this I'll, business I'll, of transportation? I'll, te I'll tell you this. Google is able to track globally everything going on. Bolt is able to tell you all the streets 
in all the cities of the world. What am I saying? The power of technology. What the Lagos State need to do is to have a camera in every car as a precondition. That camera is strategically located and must never go off. Anyone that goes off, an alarm is triggered and whoever is in charge is sanctioned. With that, you create a safe environment where, and that camera has night vision. Once you do that, you bring safety. You don't run away from problems. Any problem that comes, like I just thought of this, okay? It means that if there are people that are in charge of that transportation system and they, their own is safety in two levels, safety of the vehicle to make sure it's in check at all times, there's a checking manual, there's a center that services and gives you every six months, you go for accreditation, and because of the way it's done, you get in, they fix the system, you get out, you must, then you have certificates of change of tire, if it's every year or every two years. In fact, there's a system that they regulates that. And then you have a camera inside. That camera shows what's happening in that car. 247 is a tracker. When that is done, Lagos State government would have given us a system of transportation that is safe and can be subsidized all because right. the business of government is to make life easier for the people. What I cannot, and finally, let me say this. PPP is a global best practice. As of today, I am building one of the biggest estates in Akwaibom, in fact, in the southern part of Nigeria, where government is not putting 10 naira for any of the houses. And yet, they have an estate with full infrastructure and everything. Mm. Now, that is the way to go, PPP. So, so let this transportation be done through that PPP platform, and then it All will right, be government. Thank you, Mr. Isaac, and and I, I mean, not that I'm going to expect a response from you because we're out of time, but if PPP is actually that model that should be adopted, we still have some governors, especially in the South, side, I mean, the South South region, who have said we're going to adopt this pattern, but there's really nothing to show off at the end of the day in that state. Anyways. So get the right people. Get the right people. <laughs> this is the time. All get right. the right people. All right. Thank you, Ezekiel and Yaitok, for your time and your input on the show this morning. We do appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. God thank bless you. It to all of you. All right. It is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We are going back today in history. What happened this day back in history? We'll take that and we'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>